This is an example of a cell dashboard. The cell dashboard um, is started with just raw data. And in this case, you're taking the raw data and you are going to make a dashboard that would show senior management at a glance uh, what the sales were for the last 36 months. All right, so to do that, you start with raw data, okay, and you start with questions you're going to ask for the data. And you think about, based on what you see in the raw data, what kind of questions that would be helpful to senior management. And after you start thinking about them, you're going to put them in what's called the layout mock-up. Now, this is going to be a tab, and in the tab, you're going to ask questions of the data based on the raw data that you've been looking at, and these are examples. All they are is a te uh, text box here. So you insert, and you can insert shapes, and then put text in them, and then write the question that you think would be helpful that you could create the dashboard component to go with it for senior management to be able to see. All right, so these are the questions on the layout mock-up. All right, so you have raw data. You now have some questions. The questions will, to begin with, will just be kind of preliminary questions um, to get you started. Remember that as you work with the data, you may need to go back and change these. But at the end of the project, the question that you have here should match the dashboard itself and be in the same position that would be on your dashboard. All right, so how do you create the dashboard then? Well, once you have some questions, then you can go ahead and start with your raw data. Create a pivot table is usually the way that you work with large data sets most efficiently. So you could create a pivot table to start with and put it on a worksheet and call it Analysis 1. Here, there are numerous things on this spreadsheet. You don't have to put as many as you see on this. Some people like to put a lot on one analysis sheet, and some people like to use different ones to keep it organized. But whatever you do, make sure not to get it too confusing, so you can make sure you go back if you need to, to be able to work back and forth between the different items. Once you have the, um, say, a pivot table or the data from a pivot table that you have ready to create the chart, then you take create your chart, and then you're going to move it onto the dashboard itself. And this is an example here of the dashboard that comes from these analysis tabs. So this analysis one, two, three, four, these are all about the data that it takes to create the dashboard itself. You'll notice in here, you see like conditional formatting. Okay, so these are things that are being done in the this analysis layer here. And then the actual charts were created and then placed onto the dashboard. The dashboard should be interactive, okay, macro based. And you can see this particular chart is a good example. Right now you have all data. If you click this button, just credit just debit, just PayPal, so that's very interactive. You'll see that if you change from all years to a different year, you get a nice alert here. It says it's going to take a minute for it to work, which is fine. And then you'll see things start changing because a macro is changing those behind the scene. And now you have a different trend analysis here based on you changing the item that you're looking for right there. And you'll see numerous charts changed. So very interactive, macro-based dashboard. The last thing that I wanted to show you was the data model map. The data model map is just literally a map to your dashboard. So as you can see here, you'll have these different items at the top. You need to know what tab something's on, what the range is, what's the purpose. Um, you can have a done to just kind of be a checkoff for you, whether you did it or not. But you don't have to there. But you do know, need to have what is the linked component. 
So for example, on this particular dashboard, you have on analysis two, you have in range E3 through E801, you have a choose formula. And the choose formula is the purpose of it is to decide between showing a thumbs up or a thumbs down. This is a hyperlink. You'll see the little hand that actually is hyperlinked to the tab so that if I'm looking to see that choose formula, I could click on analysis two and it would take me right to that particular uh, choose formula. And you'll see the little thumb and you'll see this is an actual choose formula here in this range, which is what was on that data model map. So on analysis two, E3 through E801, those to decide between showing a thumbs up or thumbs down, and he used a choose, a choose formula. Hyperlinked, again, pointing straight to that. All right, so you hyperlink them. This one is hyperlinked. So how do you hyperlink? You hyperlink by clicking on the cell you want, make, go to insert, you will see a hyperlink on the ribbon, click on it. Make sure that you're placing it in this document, and you'll see for analysis four, there is analysis four right here. You click on that, click OK. You now have an analysis um, four hyperlinked to tab four. Okay, and if you, I want to change the size just to make it look right here, and you'll see analysis four is now hyperlinked to this worksheet analysis four, and I can test it by clicking on it and it takes me right to it. So that's how you create a hyperlink on your data model map. So that is an overview of the dashboard um, and it is in Excel and it is hyperlinked, making it interactive. The dashboard is also very interactive and at a glance, the senior management could see how sales are doing and click on things to see different results based on his need. I would not expect yours to look exactly like this. All the dashboards would look different because there are hundreds of questions that you can ask of this data that are acceptable. And you also would use your book, which has many other types of examples in there as well. So in the end, you will have your own version of this dashboard to turn in.